Hello developers, this is the part 4 video of AdMob Ads integration in Android app. In this video, I will explain the implementation of interstitial ads in Android app. But before watching this video, please go through this part 1 video to configure your app for AdMob Ads integration. And also have a look on this part 3 video to implement banner ads in your Android app. Okay, coming back to interstitial ads. Interstitial ads are full screen ads that cover the interface of their host app. Unlike banner ads, while implementing full screen ads, you need to follow some important ad map guidelines and best practices. Not following these guidelines may lead to ad map policy violation which results in Google disabling ad servings to your app. So first learn the guidelines and best practices for interstitial ad placement. First one. Analyze whether interstitial ads are the right type of ad for your app. Interstitial ads work best in apps with natural transition points. Means there should be very clear starting and stopping points in an app. Like sharing an image or completing a game level or going from one screen to another screen on an user action etc. If you have an app that may not meet this criteria, for example, utility apps like flashlight app, consider using another ad mob ad format instead of interstitial ads. Next, preload the interstitial ad. Consider preloading your interstitial ads to reduce latency when displaying them to your users. Means you have to load the ad in advance by calling load before you intend to call show method. This way you can avoid the wait time to load the interstitial ad and make sure to display them at an appropriate time. Third one, don't flood the user with ads. Presenting the users with too many ads or obstructing their use of the app may lead to an overall poor user experience, an increase of accidental clicks on the ads and ultimately drive users and advertisers away from your app. So don't compromise on the user experience in order to place interstitial ads within your app. Fourth point, place interstitial ads at natural transition points. Be thoughtful in placing full screen ads within your mobile app so that they complement the natural flow of user engagement. If your app is a game with different levels or stages, consider placing an interstitial ad in between one or more of these stages. If your app is not a game but has many pages or sections, consider placing an interstitial ad after a number of screens or actions taken. And if your app encourages frequent and or repeated tapping by users, it is recommended that a delay is inserted after the end of a level and before the display of an interstitial ad. This delay could be either the loading screen or please wait screen or progress bar. This helps in reducing accidental clicks. Okay, we have seen the important guidelines. Now, let's see how to implement the interstitial ads. The first step in the implementation is creating the ad unit ID. Log into AdMob account, select the app from the apps menu, go to add units. There is already one ad unit for banner ad. Let's create new ad unit for interstitial ad. Here select the interstitial ad format give the ad unit name. As I said in my last video, specify the unique ad unit name to identify your ad units easily. Here I have specified interstitial camera launch because I am implementing this interstitial ad on clicking the camera button. Now click on create ad unit. Ad unit ID is created. Now click on done. Yes, we have created the ad unit for interstitial ad. Now, let's see the implementation part. This is my app. I have already implemented the banner ads. Now, I want to implement the interstitial ad in my app. So, first check whether the interstitial ads are right choice to implement in your app. If yes, then carefully analyze where do you want to place the ad. I want to place the ad on clicking this camera icon where user is taken to this camera activity screen. Okay, before start coding, first check whether you have completed these configurations in your app. Adding dependency in modules build.gradle file. 
adding GMS application ID in manifest file and initializing the mobile ads SDK in the main activity. If you have any doubts on these configurations, please watch this video and complete the mobile ads SDK configurations in your app. Once configurations are done, let's go to implementation part. Open the activity or fragment in which you want to handle the interstitial ad. As per the guidelines, we need to first load the ad. So create a method to load the interstitial ad. Inside this method, first create add request variable. Add request dot builder dot build. Now we need to load the ad. So call interstitial ad dot load. Specify the context. This is for add unit ID, add request and the interstitial add load callback. Select the callback methods, click OK. Now let's set the add unit ID parameter. You can add a final static string variable inside this class or add a string resource variable to set the add unit ID. By doing this, you can have all the add unit IDs in one place. It will be helpful while changing the test add unit IDs to actual add unit IDs after testing and when publishing the app. Okay, copy this interstitial add unit ID and place it here. Also add the test add unit ID. Go to AdMob developer document. In interstitial ads page, you can find the dedicated test ad unit ID for interstitial ads. Copy this into the strings.xml file. I will mention this test ad unit ID in description box for your reference. Now pass that ad unit ID string resource value to load method. Okay, on ad loaded, we need to assign this interstitial ad to the local variable. Create interstitial add local variable. Assign m interstitial add equal to interstitial add. On add fail to load, set the interstitial value to null. Yes, load interstitial method is done. Now call this method on on create method because we need to load the add as soon as the activity is created. This is an another best practice. So I am calling the load interstitial method in on create view. Yes, now we need to show the interstitial ad. But before showing the ad, we need to handle the full screen content callback method. So on add load method, call m interstitial add dot set full screen content callback. Okay, new full screen content callback. Select all these methods and click OK. This callback method is called when user click on the ad. If you want to know the user click rate, then you can write your own logic here. Second, on add dismissed full screen content. This is very important callback method because on dismissing or on closing the ad, what do you want to show the user? You are going to write the logic here. On add impression is called when an impression is recorded for an ad and on add showed full screen content is called when ad is shown. Next on add failed to show full screen content is called when your ad was loaded but was failed to show. So then you need to set the ad reference to null. And on closing the ad also set the ad reference to null to avoid displaying the ad second time again. So in this method, we are loading the ad on add load, getting interstitial reference and on on dismissed, we are setting the interstitial reference to null. Now let's display the ad. I want to show the ad on click of this camera button. So on click of camera button, if interstitial ad reference is not null, then call interstitial add dot show method. And if it is null, open the camera activity 
and try loading the interstitial ad again to show it on the next time. So the implementation part is done. Now let's test the app. Run the app. Click on camera button. Yes, the full screen ad that is interstitial ad is displayed. Close the ad. Oh, it is coming back to the same screen. But the expected behavior is it should open the camera activity screen on clicking the camera icon. So on dismissed full screen content, we need to call open camera activity. Okay, now run the app. Click on camera icon. Ad is shown. Dismiss the ad. Yes, camera activity is displayed. Now come back and again click on camera icon. Activity is displayed because the interstitial ad reference is null. And now it gets loaded. If you come back again and click on camera icon, again the full screen ad is shown. This will be repeated. So to avoid displaying the ad in frequent time intervals, we can set the frequency capping for interstitial ads. Open the ad unit. Click on this advanced settings. Edit frequency capping. This limits the number of times ads are shown to the same person per minute, per hour or per day. Ok, enable this frequency capping. Show no more than one impressions per user per one minute. Means per minute only one interstitial ad will be shown to the user. Ok, save the settings. Come back to Android Studio. To check the frequency capping, we need to test the ads with the real ad unit ID instead of test ad unit ID. Okay, change the ad unit ID and run the app. Click on camera icon. Okay, ad is displayed, but it is showing test ad only because the emulators are automatically configured as test devices. Now close the ad. Camera activity is shown. Come back and click on camera icon once again. See the ad is not showed again because of the frequency capping. Ok, let's wait for a minute. After a minute, click on camera icon. Yes, ad is displayed. Ok, let's test this on device also. Let me connect my device over Wi-Fi. If you want to know how to pair your device over Wi-Fi, then please watch this video. Okay, my device got paired. Let me enable physical device mirroring also. Okay, it's already enabled. To understand the physical device mirroring, watch this video. I will give these links in the description box. Okay, now let me run the app on my real device. App launched. Click on camera icon. Yes, the real ad got displayed. Now close the ad. Go back. Click on camera icon once again. Ad is not getting displayed because of frequency capping. Okay, let's wait for a minute. After a minute, click on camera icon. Now ad gets loaded, come back and click again. See the ad gets displayed. On closing the ad, the camera activity is opened. So to implement interstitial ads, first load the ad on on create method. On add loaded, take the reference into local variable and on dismissing the ad, Set the reference to null and take the user to the respective activity which user wish to see on closing the ad. Finally, call the add show method on identified breakpoint or on user action. For example, in my case, on click of camera button. Hope you understood the correct way of interstitial ad implementation. Now, let's see the disallowed interstitial implementations app load or exit you should not place the interstitial ads on app load 
before even showing the main screen on the app and also on exiting the app. If user click on device home button or on back button or explicitly closing the app at that time interstitial ad should not be displayed means ad should not be placed outside of the app environment. Next recurring interstitials. If user chooses an action you can display an ad but on closing the ad displaying another ad is not allowed. It leads to bad user experience. Next one interstitials that impact navigation. Ad should not be placed on every user action. Avoid showing interstitial ad while user is interacting with the app's core content and functionality. If you keep showing the ads every time user clicks within the app, then user ends up deleting your app. Next interstitials that unexpectedly launch. Many developers will be facing this issue unexpected launch interstitial policy violation. This is because most of the developers try to show the ad immediately after loading the ad. This is wrong. When the user is trying to do some action on home screen and suddenly the full screen ad appears, obviously this leads to accidental clicks and often creates a frustrating user experience. So interstitial ad should only be implemented at logical breaks in between your app's content. For example, between pages, stages or levels. Next interstitial launches after page load. Even though you may intend for the ad to load in between page content, the ad itself appears shortly after a new page of content has loaded. This is due to carrier latency. To prevent this, you should preload the ad in advance. And on user action, show the preloaded ad and on closing the ad, take user to the next page. So this is the only recommended way of implementation to avoid ad mob ad policy violations. Even I have received this policy violation for one of my apps but I rectified it and uploaded a new version again. If you want to know how I solve the policy violation in my app, watch this video. I will give the link in the description box. Hope you got the clear idea on interstitial ad implementation, best practice methods and the disallowed interstitial implementations. If you think this video was helpful, please comment, like the video and subscribe to IRECA Tech Solutions. Thank you.